the 1980s was a time when the number one draft picks in the NBA were not just players, but stories waiting to unfold, each carrying hopes of franchise glory and the weight of expectations, from soaring highs to unexpected twists. But what happened to them after they joined the NBA? Well, let's find out. But before we get started, make sure to like and hit that subscribe button. 1980, Joe Barry Carroll. Kicking off our list is Joe Barry Carroll. His journey began in 1980, when the Golden State Warriors, enticed by Carroll's impressive skills, made him the number one pick in the NBA draft. Standing seven feet tall, Carroll wasn't just another player. He was a towering center on the court, bringing promise and excitement. His collegiate career at Purdue had been nothing short of stellar. He led the Boilmakers to the NCAA Final Four in 1980, showcasing his skills and earning the nickname Joe Barely Cares, a moniker that would stick with him. Solid performances in the NBA marked Carroll's tenure with the Warriors. He averaged over 20 points per game in several seasons and was a force to be reckoned with on the defensive end. However, the lofty expectations of being a number one pick meant that anything short of extraordinary was seen as underwhelming. Critics often pointed out his lack of passion, which clouded perceptions of his on-court contributions. After a few seasons with Golden State, Carroll's career took him to different teams, including the Houston Rockets and the Denver Nuggets. His time in the NBA was respectable, but as often happens in sports, injuries and time led to a decline in his performance. Now, Carroll might have barely cared, but for Worthy, it was all about shining bright in the city of stars. 1981, Mark Aguirre. Drafted as the first pick by the Dallas Mavericks, Mark Aguirre stepped onto the court as a player and a beacon of hope for the Mavericks. With an aggressive and graceful style, he became the cornerstone of the Mavericks offense. He led the team to the Western Conference Finals, a feat that was once just a distant dream. The Mavericks were no longer just participants in the league. They were powerhouses, thanks in no small part to Aguirre's relentless drive and skill. In 1989, Aguirre found himself traded to the Detroit Pistons. In Detroit, he adapted, showing the versatility and maturity of a seasoned pro. He became integral to the Pistons' bad boy squad, contributing significantly to their back-to-back -back NBA championships in 1989 and 1990. As the curtains began to close on Aguirre's illustrious career, he left the game as a player and a legend. His journey through the NBA is marked by scoring titles, all-star appearances, and championships. 1982, James Worthy. Hailing from Gastonia, North Carolina, Worthy's journey to stardom began at Ashbrook High School. In 1982, Worthy's junior year, he led the Tar Heels to the NCAA championship, sealing his status as a college basketball icon. The NBA was next, and the Los Angeles Lakers. With their storied history and penchant for greatness, were the perfect fit for Worthy. Selected as the first overall pick in the 1982 draft, he joined a team that included Magic Johnson and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, two of the greatest to ever play the game. The pinnacle of Worthy's career came in the 1987-88 season. Having already won the championship in 1987, the Lakers were on a quest to repeat. Worthy rose to the occasion throughout the playoffs and, in the finals against the Detroit Pistons, delivered performances that etched his name in the annals of basketball history. In Game 7, he recorded a triple-double, leading the Lakers to victory and earning the Finals MVP award. He was a seven-time NBA All-Star and, more importantly, a three-time NBA champion. After a stellar 12-year career, all spent with the Lakers, Worthy retired in 1994. His legacy was immortalized when he was inducted into the Basketball Hall of Fame in 2003. From Worthy's Hollywood endings to Samson's sky-high expectations, the draft picks were nothing short of legendary. 1983, Ralph Sampson, drafted by the Houston Rockets. Sampson entered the NBA with a whirlwind of expectations. His college career at the University University of Virginia had been stellar, where he bagged three Naismith College Player of the Year awards, a feat as rare as a Comet sighting. He made an immediate impact in his rookie season, showcasing a unique blend of finesse and power. This performance earned him the Rookie of the Year award, a testament to his seamless transition to the professional level. But Ralph Sampson wasn't just about individual accolades. In his second season, the Houston Rockets paired him with another future Hall of Famer, Hakeem Olajuwon. This duo, known as the Twin Towers, transformed formed the Rockets into a formidable force. Their synergy was electric, their coordination on the court almost telepathic. In the 1985-86 season, 
This dynamic duo led the Rockets to the NBA Finals, an achievement that cemented Samson's status as a critical player in the league. However, injuries began to plague him, curtailing his dominance on the court. Despite these setbacks, Samson continued to play with grace and professionalism. He had stints with different teams, including the Golden State Warriors and the Sacramento Kings, always bringing a veteran presence and a deep understanding of the game. Samson soared with Virginia finesse, yet Olajuwon's dream shake was a whole different dance. 1984, Hakeem Olajuwon. The Houston Rockets, with the first overall pick, set their sights on a towering figure from the University of Houston. This was no ordinary player. This was Hakeem Olajuwon. The Rockets, already having a solid center in Ralph Sampson, saw an opportunity to create an unstoppable duo by drafting Olajuwon. They weren't mistaken. Hakeem quickly adapted to the NBA's pace and physicality, showcasing a unique blend of agility, skill, and basketball IQ that was rare for a player of his size. His footwork later famously known as the Dream Shake, bewildered even the best defenders. Olajuwon's impact was immediate and profound. In his second season, he led the Rockets to the NBA Finals, a sign of his transformative influence on the team. But his actual moment of glory was yet to come. In the mid-90s, with Michael Jordan briefly retired, Olajuwon seized the spotlight. The 1993-94 and 1994-95 seasons were his crowning achievements, leading the Rockets to back-to-back back NBA championships and earning finals MVP honors. Olajuwon dominated the court with finesse, but Ewing brought the New York hustle, making the Big Apple buzz with every slam. 1985, Patrick Ewing. Back in 1985, the basketball world buzzed excitedly as Patrick Ewing, a towering figure from Georgetown University, stepped into the NBA spotlight. This wasn't just any draft pick. Ewing was a phenomenon, a player who brought not just skill, but a wave of anticipation to the New York Knicks, a team desperately in need of a hero. His college career was marked by remarkable achievements, including leading Georgetown to three NCAA championship games and winning one in 1984. When the Knicks won the NBA draft lottery, it felt like destiny. The team, struggling for years, now had a centerpiece to build around. Ewing didn't disappoint. His rookie season was electrifying. He averaged an impressive 20 points, 9 rebounds, and 2 blocks per game, earning him the NBA Rookie of the Year award. His impact was immediate, revitalizing the Knicks and reigniting the passion of New York basketball fans. The peak of Ewing's career came in the 1990s. For instance, in 1994, he and the Knicks faced Hakeem Olajuwon's Houston Rockets in a thrilling seven-game series. Despite falling short, his performance was a testament to his greatness. After retiring, he transitioned into coaching, sharing his knowledge and passion for the game. While Ewing's Knicks battled royally, Daughtry was spinning his own cavalier tail with a quieter, yet impactful reign. 1986 Brad Doherty Born in Black Mountain, North Carolina in 1965, Doherty's basketball prowess became evident early on. He dominated the court in high school and continued to shine at the University of North Carolina, where, under the tutelage of the legendary coach Dean Smith, his game reached new heights. The Cleveland Cavaliers, a team looking to rebuild and make a mark in the league saw Doherty as their beacon of hope. When they secured the first pick in the draft, they didn't hesitate to bring the 6'11 center into their fold. Doherty didn't disappoint. He immediately made an impact in his rookie season, showcasing a unique blend of size, skill, and basketball IQ that was rare for prominent men of that era. Remarkable achievements marked Doherty's time with the Cavaliers. He was a five-time All-Star, known for his smooth play and ability to score, rebound, and facilitate for his teammates. He helped propel the Cavaliers into contender in the Eastern Conference, creating memorable moments and exciting matchups against some of the era's greatest teams. But like many athletes, Doherty's career was a race against time and physical limitations. His journey was cut short due to back injuries, leading to an early retirement in 1994. Doherty's star shone in the land of rock, but Robinson sailed in to anchor a new era in Spurs history. 1987 – David Robinson Back in 1987, the basketball world witnessed a pivotal moment, the drafting of David Robinson by the San Antonio Spurs as the number one pick. Standing at an imposing 7'1", Robinson possessed a unique blend of athleticism, intelligence, and skill that was rare in big men of his era. But what set him apart was his background. Before stepping onto the NBA hardwood, Robinson had committed to serving his country. Having graduated from the United States Naval Academy, 
This commitment led him to serving two years in the Navy, delaying his NBA debut. Robinson's entry into the NBA was highly anticipated. He immediately made an impact when he finally donned the Spurs jersey in 1989. His rookie season was nothing short of sensational, earning him the Rookie of the Year award. Robinson wasn't just a scoring machine, he was a defensive titan, a rebounding force, and a shot-blocking nightmare for opponents. His presence transformed the Spurs into a formidable team. Throughout his career, he accumulated a string of accolades. He was a 10-time All-Star, a two-time Olympic gold medalist and an NBA MVP in 1995. His most significant achievement was leading the Spurs to their first ever NBA championship in 1999, a feat he repeated in 2003. Robinson's career came to a fitting end in 2003, retiring as a champion. 1988, Danny Manning, selected as the number one pick in the 1988 draft by the Los Angeles Clippers, he entered the league with high expectations. A standout at the University of Kansas, Manning led the Jayhawks to an NCAA championship in 1988, earning the Final Four Most Outstanding Player Award. His college success set the stage for what many hoped would be a dominant NBA career. Manning's NBA journey, however, was a tale of unfulfilled potential, largely due to injuries. In his rookie season, he suffered a devastating interior cruciate ligament injury, which significantly impacted his explosiveness and athleticism. Despite the setback, Manning demonstrated resilience and adaptability. He developed a more skill-focused game, relying on his basketball IQ and technical skills rather than than sheer athleticism. Throughout his career, he was a versatile forward, capable of playing both small forward and power forward positions. He was known for his scoring ability, decent ball handling skills, and a solid mid-range shot. Within no time, he earned two All-Star selections, 1993 and 1994, and had stints with several teams, including the Atlanta Hawks and Phoenix Suns, showcasing his talent in different roles. While Manning's career might not have reached the superstar heights expected of a number one draft pick, he still carved out a respectable and noteworthy place in the NBA. 1989, Purvis Ellison, selected as the number one draft pick in 1989 by the Sacramento Kings. He had a career that didn't live to the high expectations typically associated with a top draft selection. Injuries significantly hampered his professional career. In his rookie season with the Kings, he played only 34 games due to a series of injuries, which set the tone for much of his time in the NBA. After a lackluster start, he was traded to the Washington Bullets, now Wizards, where he had his most successful season in 1991-1992. That year, Ellison averaged 20 points, 11.2 rebounds, and 2.7 blocks per game, earning the NBA's Most Improved Player Award. Despite this high point, Ellison's career never fully took off. He spent time with the Boston Celtics and the Seattle Supersonics before his career fizzled out. So, if you had the chance to choose a number one draft pick from any era, who would it be and why? Drop your thoughts in the comments below, and let's keep this conversation going. Remember to leave a like and subscribe.